in this video we are going to talk about a webhook authentication because uh, i think authentication is so fundamental that in almost 80 percent of the cases you have to first verify the request before granting any access to the workflow so nn provide us a uh, different types of authentication methods and we are going to see a couple of them uh, just create a new workflow uh, since we are going to uh, use authentication for webhooks that's why we are going to stick with the webhook authentication methods so let's first create a trigger and that is going to be my webhook now under this parameter section uh, you are going to see this uh, authentication up till now uh, we have kept this authentication to none uh, but now let's open this drop down and we can see we have three different options first one is this uh, basic authentication in which you are going to provide the username and the password then we have the header auth so in header auth you usually provide uh, a key along with its value so uh, think of it like the key could be my client id and then the value will be its token or something like that then we have the JWT token and I think this is one of the most commonly used authentication method uh, not only in NA10 but uh, in other uh, web applications as well. So in JWT token what you are going to do uh, is to first assign the username and password using uh, some algorithm like uh, HS264 and then you need to pass that token to the NA10 Anaten is going to verify that token using your secret and if the verification process is successful then it will grant the access i think we are going to uh, use in the upcoming videos this jwt token but in this video let's explore uh, all three of them so the first is going to be my basic auth let's select it then uh, we need to create that credential so uh, by default you are going to see here uh, nothing uh, so let's click on this create new credentials uh, give the credential a name i'll say basic auth tutorial and then you need to provide the username and password so this username and this password should be present in the subsequent request otherwise this na10 is going to deny that request so uh, let's maybe use uh, umair as the username and the password is going to be uh, 1234567 so from 1 to add uh, let's save it close it and now make sure to select that basic auth tutorial credential and i'm going to respond immediately not uh, using the respond to webhook node i'll also rename this webhook go back to canvas now add respond to webhook node and i'm going to send a custom json key is going to be response value will be node executed successfully now go back to canvas we need to test it so copy this url the method is going to be get click on test workflow open the favorite <laughs> tender client uh, create a new collection inside the collection create a new request now if i paste uh, the url and send the request without providing any authentication uh, we can see we got this error of uh, 401 unauthorized so authorization is required there are a couple of uh, different error messages for example one is this uh, 401 uh, unauthorized access so we need to provide the authorization the second status is 403 uh, which means that the authorization uh, is unsuccessful the credentials are invalid and then we have the 200 status uh, this means uh, everything is fine so now just go to this uh, auth and we have couple of options 
since we have selected the basic auth that's why we are going to click on this basic auth as well and need to provide the username and password right here so now let's provide the incorrect username and password and see the 403 uh, status code so the username is going to be Omer but uh, the password is going to be 12345 and let's send the request and we got 403 forbidden this means the authorization data is wrong now let's provide the correct password which is 12345678 let's send the request oops we need to test the workflow again and let's send the request and this time we got status 200 okay this means our authentication method is correct and the credentials are correct as well and we got the not executed successfully so i hope you have understood this uh, basic authentication now let's move toward uh, the header authentication uh, it's quite simple as well uh, let me put here another webhook and this time the authentication is going to be header auth and just like basic auth we need to create the credentials so click on create new credentials and now here it just asks you two things the name or you can consider it the key and then we have the value so in this case i'll say the key is going to be authorization and its value is going to be any kind of token again i'm going to keep things simple and the token will be digits from one to eight and that's it uh, now let's rename this credential save it now select that credential header or uh, tutorial and the respond is going to be respond to webhook node back to canvas attach a respond to webhook node select the respond with json so authorization is successful back to canvas test the workflow copy the url back to thunder client and now i'm going to create a new request this time it is going to be header auth the method is going to be get if i paste the url and without any authentication i send the request I'm going to get 403 forbidden so the authorization data is wrong uh, all you need to do is to go to headers this time since we are using the header authentication so that's why I go to header and the header is going to be authorization so this is the key which we have set in the credentials in NA10 so authorization and what is its value it is the token we have provided so one two three four five six seven eight now let's send the request and we got status 200 authorization is successful if you provide a, a different token uh, it isn't going to work uh, oops we need to run let's send and we got 403 forbidden so our authorization data is wrong now let's discuss the JWT token. So JWT token is a bit different from uh, these two uh, methods. Uh, let me put it right here first. Search for the webhook. And the authentication method in this case is going to be a JWT auth. And uh, we need to create a new JWT account. And here under the key type uh, you need to select this passphrase because this is one of the most commonly used authentication method in jwt so passphrase then you need to provide here this uh, secret so this is the secret which this algorithm in this case hs256 is going to use to uh, verify your data and this is the same secret and same algorithm which you are going to use on the client end for signing the data so there are two processes one is verification one is signing so the client is going to uh, sign the data using the same secret and same algorithm and then 
NITN is going to verify that token using the same secret and same algorithm. So in case of signing the data, uh, for now we are going to uh, use this website jwt.io. They provide us two features the JWT decoder but this JWT decoder is the part which NATN is going to handle automatically it's the verification process and we are interested in this JWT encoder because uh, on the client side we need to first sign the JWT token uh, and the NATN is going to verify so for signing I'm going to use this JWT.io website and click on this JWT encoder uh, you need to provide here the algorithm the type so algorithm is going to be HS256 make sure that this algorithm should match uh, this algorithm which you have selected right here and the type is JWT that's fine and now this is the payload uh, basically what uh, JWT does it takes some data uh, it takes an algorithm then it takes a secret so three things as an input and then it is going to use that secret and that algorithm to create a token of your data so this is going to be the data and after signing this data uh, this is the token which we are going to get and once the NATN verifies this token uh, it will give us back uh, this data so it's like encoding and decoding process and then this is the secret uh, which we are using uh, for signing uh, this data or for encrypting this data so make sure that this secret and uh, this secret should match and uh, this secret should be at least uh, 256 bits long so I think I'm going to use uh, this secret you can obviously change it to uh, like anything but as long as it's 256 it's a valid secret so let's copy this secret copy and I'm going to uh, tell NATN to use this secret for the verification and uh, this is going to be my algorithm uh, let's save make sure to rename it uh, but okay I'll keep it as it is uh, select that newly created JWT account and go back to canvas now let's add the respond to webhook and in this case I'm going to return all the incoming items because once the NATN is going to verify the token uh, it is going to return this payload to us so we need to uh, show this payload on the Thunder client just to verify that everything is fine so I'm going to select all incoming items back to canvas copy the webhook URL click on test workflow open the Thunder client create a new request and in case of JWT auth uh, firstly let's paste the URL and if I send the request it isn't going to work mm, let's open it uh, okay so uh, this wasn't the error I was expecting uh, respond to is going to be uh, use respond to webhook node now test the workflow uh, send the request uh, I was expecting this uh, status error so 401 uh, we haven't provided any token so first of all we need to provide so where are you going to provide that token click on this auth tab and as you can see we don't have any JWT option uh, basically uh, you need to provide that JWT token uh, using this bearer uh, option so click on this bearer and here you need to provide that token so again go to uh, jwt.io website and usually this process will be done on your client side but since we do not have any uh, client application write react don't worry in the upcoming videos we are going to create our client application and we'll sign that jwt token uh, in that application but for now uh, let's use this jwt.io for signing the data so our secret is going to be this and what is going to be the payload let's modify this payload uh, I'll provide the email address and the password and this is usually uh, two things which you are going to sign uh, in like 80% scenarios so email is going to be
So email and password, this is the payload. Algorithm is same. This is our secret. And now this is the token which we got. So if you make any change, you can see that the token is changing. So for each unique payload, it is going to generate a unique token. And even if you change this secret, the token will change as well. So just copy this token paste the token now uh, make sure that workflow is running uh, test workflow and send the request and here as you can see we got the status r200 and in the response uh, you are going to see that jwt payload so this is the payload and the verification process has been successful and it has decoded our payload successfully now if i make any change maybe replacing this c with d the verification isn't going to work we need to first test the workflow uh, send the request and as you can see the signature is invalid so this token should match the one which you have signed otherwise the verification isn't going to work so i hope you have understood these three methods the basic auth the header auth and the jwt and in the next video we are going to utilize the jwt token uh, for verifying the user request and i'll see you there bye bye